Hello everyone. I'm Kanak Prabha Jithani and I welcome you all to the series on covered bonds. Covered bonds could be the game changer of structured finance industry. These are the only instruments that were able to withstand the global financial crisis in 2007 and 8 and they are most likely to withstand the impact of this ongoing pandemic as well. These are the only instruments that have never defaulted. In fact, between 1997 to 2019, 33 issuers of covered bonds went into default, but in none of the cases, the instrument itself see a default. Considering how important covered bonds could be for the future of structured finance, we decided to start this series on covered bonds. This series will have short videos dealing with several aspects of covered bonds. This is the first session in this series, in which we'll understand what covered bonds exactly are. Before we start with getting into details of covered bonds, let me just quickly run you all through the outline of this session or the points that we are going to cover in this session. So we'll start with understanding what corporate, what covered bonds are. Then we'll have a brief look at the history or the story of the origination of these bonds. Thereafter, we'll look at features and benefits of covered bonds, why an issuer should consider issuing covered bonds and why an investor should consider covered bonds as an investment avenue. Towards the end of this video, we'll compare covered bonds with traditional corporate bonds and mortgage-backed securities. At this stage, you might decide if this is of interest to you and if you would want to continue watching. Let us now start with the concept of covered bonds. Covered bonds are a hybrid instrument. They are something between a secured corporate bond and an asset-backed security. I know this might seem very vague by now. Let us simplify this concept by taking an example. Let's say A Limited is a housing finance company, or we'll call it A in this example. So A gives out loans to home buyers. These loans are usually of long maturities like 15 to 30 years, and these are backed by mortgage on the houses. That is why these loans are also called mortgage loans. Now, when A lends to home buyers, A's capital gets blocked for a long time. Now, A might need funds for its further operations. So, A now has two traditional sources of funding. One is that it may go for a loan from a financial institution. Second is that it may issue equity. Issuing equity will obviously come with a huge cost. So the second option A has is to go for a loan from a financial institution. Lending loans of such high maturities and such high volumes, the lenders usually require high credit ratings. Let's say A is a small lender and does not have a very high credit rating. This, these are the cases when structured finance comes to aid. A can issue bonds which will be backed by the mortgage loans that A has on its book. This pool of assets that will be backing the bonds is called cover pool. How this cover pool is created, we'll come to this in a minute. For now, let us look at the entire picture. So A will be issuing covered bonds which will be backed by a pool of mortgage loans. Now, these mortgage loans still stay on A's books only. These do not go away from its books. But at the same time, provide an additional security to the investor. How? Let's, let's say A will continue to service these loans. And at the same time, A will also continue to repay the interest and principal on the corporate bonds. Now, when A is unable to pay or A defaults in paying the interest and principal on these bonds, the investors will have a right on the receivables of the cover pool. Because of this, now we can obviously see here that 
there are two layers of security to the investor. First is that it will have a recourse against the issuer. And second, it will have a recourse on the cover pool. Because of this very feature, covered bonds are also known as dual recourse bonds. Now let us get back to the question we left a minute ago. How is a cover pool created? For this, we'll have to first understand what a cover pool exactly is. So cover pool is nothing but a dynamic collection of various assets. When I say dynamic, I mean that the assets that constitute this pool may be changed, but the characteristic of the pool does not. So let's say for an issue of $1 million, an, an amount of $1.5 million is assigned to the cover pool. Now, some assets will be collected, which altogether form a pool of 1.5 million. Now, let's say some of these assets are prepaid or repaid, which will result in reduction in the value of the pool. A will have to bring in new assets to replenish this pool every time there is a repayment so that the value of the pool is kept intact until these bonds are redeemed. Now, let us look at the history of covered bonds. Covered bonds are not a new thing. In fact, in 2019, we celebrated 250th anniversary of the first covered bonds issuances in the world. In 1769 in Prussia, the first covered bonds issuance took place. Prussia was in war for seven years and the funds of the country had entirely dried up. At this time, the then king of the country, Frederick the Great, issued an order to form a public association of landowners. This association will enable the landowners to issue full recourse bonds for raising agricultural credit. These bonds provided the investors with a recourse on the issuer, that is the landowners, as well as the assets of the association. Until 21st century, covered bonds remained a European phenomenon. US had its first issuance of covered bonds in 2006. The global financial crisis took place in 2007 and 8. And one of the major reasons behind the crisis was securitization backed by subprime mortgages. It was at this time that people started looking at covered bonds as an alternative to securitization. Asia followed the footsteps of US and had its first issue in 2009. India had its first issue in 2019 when the global issuance volumes of covered bonds had reached to 117 billion euros. Now that we have a helicopter view of what covered bonds look like, let us understand the basic features of our characteristics of covered bonds. From A's example, we have a brief idea what a covered bond, a covered bond is and what feature it, features it has, like the feature of dual recalls, the feature of assets staying on the books of the issuer, the feature of the pool or the cover pool being dynamic. There are a few more features like these bonds are prepayment protected or the issuer has the prepayment risk. When we discussed cover pool, we discussed that in case there is a prepayment of the loan, the issuer has to replenish the cover pool with a new loan. This, and this explains the feature of prepayment protection in the covered bonds. Another feature is that the bondholders have a priority over these assets. Since we know that cover pool is a ring fenced pool, in the event of bankruptcy of the issuer, the cover pool's receivables go directly to the investors in the bond. And they are not treated like any other secured creditor. Another benefit that these provide is a rating arbitrage. As we know, A was a small lender and did not have a very good credit rating. Let's say A had a triple B rating, but A's investors were looking at an A-rated instrument. 
by securing the issue with a cover covered bond pool a cover pool a was able to upgrade the rating to a few notches and this is how covered bonds provide rating arbitrage we'll discuss this rating arbitrage and notching up of ratings in our upcoming sessions as well now let us understand the benefits that covered bonds provide to issuers and investors if we look back at a which was a small lender with not very good credit rating a did not have the option to issue equity because it could not have been able to afford such high cost of financing in case of covered bonds since there is a dual recourse there is an additional layer of security for the investors and because of this additional layer of security the cost of covered bonds issuances lowers down another benefit that a had is that the illiquid mortgage loans that were there on the books of a stayed in its books books and at the same time were converted into liquid securities that is the covered bonds so as we see the traditional the traditional mortgage loans that were in the books of a were converted into liquid securities and at the same time the balance sheet of a did not contract this was for the issuer how will an investor benefit from covered bonds or why would an investor invest in a's covered bonds from the features of covered bonds and understanding their nature we get that these bonds are meant for risk averse investors usually the investors in covered bonds are risk averse institutional investors like pension funds these institutions look for an instrument which is which has a high rating which is liquid and at the same time provides additional layers and layers of securities usually a covered bonds issuance is not only backed by a cover pool but this cover pool is highly over collateralized as we saw in our example for an issue of 1 billion dollars a cover pool of 1.5 billion dollars was created this 0.5 billion is the additional security that the covered bonds provide another thing here is a cover pool usually consists of mortgage backed loans now mortgage backed loans have a concept of ltv or the loan to value ratio let's say for an asset of 100 dollars a loan of let's say of let's say 50 dollars or 70 dollars is provided and the rest of the gap again provides an additional layer of security to cover bonds and with so many layers of security the rating of the instrument also rises and as we saw the prepayment risk is retained by the investor hence the risk averse investors would look at more and more layers of security let us now understand how a covered bond is different from the two components it is comprised of that is corporate bonds and asset backed securities a secured corporate bond and a covered bond are similar in some ways both of them are secured by a security and the issuer is liable to repay to the investors in case of secured corporate bonds the bond is backed by a single or a group of assets which are not ring fenced since these are not ring fenced the investors do not have an exclusive right over the assets in case the issuer fails to repay the investors will have to enforce security interest on the underlying assets in order to have their rights however in case of covered bonds as soon as the issuer defaults the receivables from the cover pool start flowing to the investors in case of insolvency of the issuer the investors in secured corporate bonds will be treated like any other secured creditor but the investors of covered bonds will have sole rights over the cover pool hence we can say that the security in covered bonds in in covered bonds is exclusive and hence 
the linkage of rating to the issuer in case of covered bonds is less as compared to corporate bonds. This was how corporate bonds are different from covered bonds. Let us now look at the second aspect of this structure, which is how a covered bond differs from a securitized instrument or an asset-backed security. In case of securitization, the assets are transferred from the books of the originator to a special purpose vehicle or an SPV. The SPV then issues securities backed by these group of assets or the pool of assets. In case of securitization, the pool is a static pool, which means that it cannot be replenished again and again. Another difference here is that securitization is based on a pass-through structure. This means that the receivables of the pool flow directly to the investor and the issuer or the originator is not liable to pay anything to the investor except for obviously the credit enhancement that it has provided. Another thing is that in this case, assets go off the balance sheet of the originator and hence, there is no linkage between the originator and the static pool that is underlying the issue of the securities. Since these are passed through structures, the risks such as prepayment or default risk are also transferred to the investor and the issuer does not retain it with them. Also, if you see, since the pool is a static pool, in case there is a prepayment of the underlying assets, the issuer cannot replenish it and hence the risk is transferred to the investor. The cost of funding, if you see, is higher in case of securitization as compared to that of covered bonds. This is because covered bonds provide two layers of recourse to the investor while mortgage-backed securities provide only one layer of recourse. Even though the cost of funding is low in covered bonds, the rating of MBS is higher as, covered to cover, as compared to covered bonds. This is because of the reason that the rating has no linkage with the issuer, which is not the case in covered bonds. This brings us to the end of this discussion. I hope you all like this video. You may please post your feedback and queries in the comment section. We'll soon be coming up with a second session in this series. Till then, stay tuned. Thank you.